Hey, hey. We're your host, Jay and Sienna. And welcome to Obviously I'm Joking. Let's go. Today we're turning Australia's paranoia up to 11 as we ask around for what happened to Howard Holt. Stay tuned for an interview with our live comedian of the week. Then sit back, relax and enjoy a couple of other surprises along the way. Come and join us for a great show today. That was a bit exhausting. Yeah. I'm not sure why we're still tired, though. I mean, we filmed that intro a week ago. I have a very weak <laughs> metabolism. Anyways, I'm Jaden Monson. And I'm Sienna Curry. And this is Obviously I'm Joking, a show we're about sitting down with our favourite stand-up comedians. Now let's get into our first segment. I've decided to call What's Happening? Really? That's, that's what you went with? Sure. All right, well, Who Magazine says that The Real Housewives of Melbourne is back for a fifth season. The real question on everyone's mind is, who cares? I don't know about you, Jaden, but as a student dealing with a lot of hex debt, I really do empathise with the tough lives of rich middle-aged women. A lot of sympathy there. Speaking of rich and middle-aged, Australia has made the astounding achievement of seven Prime Ministers in the past ten years. Yeah, it seems Australia is still determined to wait until we have a Prime Minister that can break Bob Hawke's beer sculling record. Very true. On the subject of Australia's incredible Prime Minister's past, how can we forget the day one went for a swim and disappeared altogether? Good old Harold Holt, the white whale of Australian Prime Ministers. He really is the enigma. One that I felt needed to be cracked. He really is. Jaden decided to do some investigative journalism and find out just where Harold Holt disappeared to. On his hunt for Holt, Jaden travelled deep into the city to see if the people of Australia had any leads for us. We're in Burke Street Mall today and we're going to find out what happened to Harold Holt. What was your name there, good sir? Mine's Jaden. Solihan. Solihan Millen. Uh, my name is Caesar. Prabhat. Oh, Raybang? Have you heard of Harold Holt? Uh, no, I haven't. I have just heard about him. You just heard about him? How he went out? Yeah, he just yeah. went out for a swim, disappeared. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, like, Prime Minister's just gone. Like, no, nothing suspicious going on there. That's just a normal, everyday thing. I think it's kind of comical that, like, sort of like the leader of our country just succumbed to, like, waves. Did, did he actually go swimming? Like, who knows? Vaccines have never been safety tested. Maybe these guys just want to escape being presidents, right? I mean, is it even a good job? If you look at the science, you look at the curves. They named a swimming pool after him. A swimming pool. You know, measles, you don't die from the measles. Harold, the search continues. We will find you. At least you will be forever immortalised, oddly enough, as a swimming pool. Who knew it would be so hard to find a dead Prime Minister, to be honest? <laughs> So, Jaden, you did something recently, didn't you? I sure did, actually. Uh, I tried some stand-up comedy at the Resistance uh, Bar and Cafe. It was a fun place. Sort of reminded me of my uncle's cool basement. Uh, but I tested it out uh, to experience what comedians really have to face out there. And how was that? Extraordinarily stressful, especially knowing my first time would possibly bombing, would be immortalised on video as well. Thanks for that, guys. But I surprisingly got some laughs, so why don't you guys take a look? Submarines. Who gets that shit? <laughs> <laughs> All right? Who wants to be on a f***ing <laughs> submarine? You go to the Navy, you're like, I want to be on a f***ing <laughs> submarine. I, I get the idea, right? Uh, like, there was a general <laughs> sitting around one day, and he had his engineer, and the engineer's like, All right, this is going to be a crazy one. <laughs> We're going to make a boat that goes underwater. <laughs> They'll never expect it, will they? <laughs> exactly. I don't think anyone expected them to go through with that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Who the would do that? But now, it's like, we all know where the f***ing are. You've got the radar and shit with the blip on it. You know, boop, boop, boop. There's a little f***ing submarine over there. <laughs> There's no f***ing surprise to it anymore. Wasn't that the whole f***ing gear? We could see a turd under the water. See <laughs> 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 
Yes, I did that. It involved sitting in the fetal position under a scorching hot shower for half an hour before finally somehow summoning the courage to go to what I foresaw as the imminent death of my self-esteem. And you can too. <laughs> but it was fun, seriously. If you're going or if you're curious about going, uh, I'd highly recommend signing up to an open mic near you. Speaking of seeing for yourself, we have a wonderful comedian here for you guys today. Welcome to the stage, our wonderfully hilarious guest, Liam Rady. I started at the resistance as well, so oh, there you way go. back when. So yeah, it's good stuff. Back in the day, that's where, that's where you you got to start, I guess. So, yeah. You got to start somewhere. It's uh, a safe space. And uh, yeah, safe space. <laughs> with all those milk crates and uh, yeah, definitely. Do. Yeah, a lot of beanbags. A lot of beanbags. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty chill, so yeah, it yeah. kind of helps. Yeah, a little absolutely. Bit. Um, but you've been on stage for a fair while. I was absolutely terrified. Um, so does it get any easier? I guess is my question for you. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think stage time is probably the thing you want to be doing the most when you start like as much as bombing can be somewhat negative like even yeah. there like that's just a loose set that that little overlay there. like that's just just me trying to make sure that I continue to put the hours in just like anything that you put the hours in on stage just as much as you put in writing watching listening to other comics it, it's really important to just be comfortable with the the lifestyle of constantly performing each night so it's all just a bit of a learning experience isn't it do Pretty you have anyone much, yeah. that um that inspires you to keep doing it that inspires you to start um i mean obviously seeing every other comic that i work with around around melbourne and seeing them do good or have a festival show or a fringe show with the fringe on at the moment particularly it's pretty inspiring to see how far they've come but mm. i think I mean, it's probably everyone's answer, but I was, I was force-fed Seinfeld like it was food <laughs> when I was a kid. So, uh, Jer Jerry Seinfeld and then, you know, a lot of other similar comics. Uh, John Mulaney, Nate Bogatze is a big one. Uh, Eliza Schlesling is a great one. She's got a few specials on Netflix. So, yeah, those, those kind of ones I kind of like to go back to every now and then and just remind myself why it is... Um, People yeah. do what they do, I guess. Get inspired, I yeah, guess. Absolutely. Well, I guess you've been performing for a group of people for a fair while now, mm -hmm. but I want to know when was the first time you actually quite realised that? Well, actually, that why don't we just have a look and see if we enjoy Liam's performance just as much? Liam, why yeah. don't you give us Sounds a taste good. of your set? <laughs> let's yeah, give let's it a do try. it. Let's just go for it. Thanks, Thanks guys. Man. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. It's great to be here, I've got to tell you that. Uh, recently, I I turned 19 years old, uh, starting to get into the groove of the uh, of the adult lifestyle, and uh, I got to tell you, I've noticed there's a lot of things you can do when you're a kid that you can't do as an adult. And I got to be honest, it's, it's really frustrating. I was thinking about this, like sack tapping. I know that sounds weird, but as a as an adult, you, you can't sack tap the way like you did as a as professionally as you did in primary school. Trust me, <laughs> I, I, I've tried. Yeah, you can't sack tap as a, you, you know what sack tapping's called when you're you're an adult? It's called assault. That's what it's called. <laughs> it's it's next level stuff. I mean, think about it. When you're a kid, worst case scenario, you hit another kid in the nuts. At least they fall over and still laugh while they do it. They appreciate it for the A-grade comedy <laughs> that it really is. When when you do that as an adult in the workplace, you you go to HR. So <laughs> It is what it is, I guess. I mean, I've just got to get used to the idea of things changing over time. It's it's been that way for all of human history. I was reading uh, recently that uh, you, you can become better at being adult, an adult if you just start cooking more yourself, which is what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to cook a bit more myself. And I've got to tell you, it's not going well at all. Uh, recently, I had some people over uh, for dinner, and I thought I'd just cook a roast chicken, just to keep it simple, keep it easy, and just get the job done that way. And uh, I've got to tell you, I was very paranoid about uh, undercooking this chicken. So what I did was, was I decided I would let it cook a little bit longer than normal, just a couple more minutes, just to make sure that nobody got sick, including myself, and I just, uh, I just went for it. And let me tell you, when I pulled this thing out of the oven, I, I didn't know you could cook things this much, okay? Uh, when, I, when I cooked this thing, when, I, when it came out, it looked so cooked, it looked like an ice addict. That's, <laughs> like, this thing looked so cooked, it kind of, it looked like it wanted to fight me in the street. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'll leave that there. Thank you so much for having me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much, Liam. Um, now, where can people find you? Uh, so, at the end of October, I've got a show for Halloween at uh, Kaz's Dirty Secrets, so you can get tickets for that at trybooking.com. They're $10, or you can get them at the door. And also, just wherever you can around the scene, around Melbourne Comedy Scene, I'm usually wherever, so just look out for the name on the poster, and yeah, Fantastic. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Liam Rowdy, yeah, everybody. Guys, thank you very much.
Very, now, very well known. if you just want to sit back and catch a laugh, Melbourne has plenty of major events coming up for you. That's right. There are a few names coming to Melbourne that you might want to catch while you can. Uh, US comedian Arj Barker has been testing out his new set, Safe Space, at the Beer Cafe. Uh, you'll be able to catch him there until 20, the 29th of October. Uh, Eric Andre brings his legal, ev Legalise Everything World Tour to Melbourne December 6th at the Athenium Theatre. Athenium, Athenium, Athenium Theatre? That's it. And finally, the infamous Steve Martin and Martin Short are bringing their critically acclaimed comedy, Now You See Them, Soon You Won't, to Australia for the very first time. That is on November 15th at the Melbourne Arena. Now it's time for our final performance of the night. Please sit back and relax as we bring out one of our amazing musical acts, Taya Rose. When I was a little girl, I read so many stories, but of course I knew their words could not be true. But now I am a bigger girl, and now you tell me stories, and for some reason I believe the words from you. The world was made of roses, and the sky a romantic hue, with every memory painted up with you. But now I want more stories to blindly hope for truths, but how can I go on when the words are mute? Because your love was a fairy tale Some words I believed in A feeling I bathed in Your love was a fairy tale And I yearn for it stronger Now we're no longer the perfect fairy tale Silence becomes more deafening each long and lonely night While I wait for you to come turn out the light And others tell me stories which are likely to be true But I want none of them unless the words are from you Oh, how the world is darkened and the demons deep inside Wrestle to win and bring eternal night but my light will keep on shining, my love I cannot lose. My story will go on with or without you. Because your love was a fairy tale. Some words I believed in, a feeling I bathed in. Your love was a fairy tale. And I yearn for it stronger now and no longer the perfect fairy tale. And as the night sets in, off on a horse I'll ride, and in the sun's orange glow I'll wave a hand goodbye, cause someday I know one day I'll show you the light and love that you let go For my love for you couldn't have been more true But of course your love was a fairy tale Some words that I believed in a feeling that I bathed in Your love was a fairy tale And I yearn for it stronger But now we're no longer The perfect fairy tale Absolutely amazing. Thanks, Taya. That was just beautiful. That's it for the show today. Uh, if you've enjoyed this and want to see another episode, hit that like button and keep updated on our page. Also remember to let us know if you've seen Harold Holt. I'm starting to worry. And to all you fellow admirers of the ha-has and he-he's out there, goodbye and keep laughing. We did it.